I was just here last Wednesday. I wish they'd get that Roadrunner train down here too. Um, you know, we travel back so much across the state during the statewide campaign, and you get to see this beautiful land. I think that's what I enjoy most about running for statewide office. It's um, it's an opportunity to drive every road, see how the habitat is doing, and see the wildlife, and uh, just what a beautiful land of enchantment we really live in. You know, I've served as land commissioner twice before, in the 80s and 90s. I was mayor of Albuquerque. I served as a BLM director for President Clinton. And I just retired as a state natural resource trustee for Governor Richardson in Santa Fe. And um, I really don't need a job. It's, it's a nice feeling, you know. I'm retired and I can do a lot of consulting and actually make a lot more money than I would make if I get reelected to the land office. But I felt so strongly about the need to start paying more attention to our state lands in a very permanent way. Um, I have seen uh, this state grow. I'm 61 years old. Uh, when I was born in Albuquerque, it was a small town. Now it's a metropolis. I see um, urban sprawl. I see development, whether it be mining, oil and gas, uh, industrial, covering large parts of our state. And it just becomes more and more apparent that if we are going to turn over the landscapes that we love so much, along with clean water, water supplies, functioning watersheds, and habitat, that we really have to change the way we think we do things at the state land office. Just in the last 25 years, since I was first elected back in the early 80s, I've seen dramatic changes. And so, after thinking about it and discussing it with Bobby, my wife, um, I really decided I would take one more crack at the land office, and I want to do it for some very specific reasons. Our Constitution was written in 1910, and I think it worked very well for a long time after it was adopted in 1912. The land office was formed under that Constitution, and the mandate for the land office was on every square inch of state trust land, you will make money for education. And that was a high and profound task land commissioners had. For lots of accidental reasons, we located a lot of the state lands within loose elections over portions of the state that had lots of oil and gas in it. 95, 98 percent of our revenues at the land office come from oil and gas. And it's been very good to us. And our permanent fund sits at nine billion dollars. And we're still making lots of money every year for the state land office. But I wanted to run so that we could maybe change our constitution to start looking at ways of protecting permanently and withdrawing from mineral entry special landscapes, watersheds and riparian areas, special open spaces and wildlife habitat. I believe this is important if we're going to turn over the things that we love so much to future generations. Some people will say, well, you can either fund education or save these special places. I think that's a false choice. I think you can do both. I think that we can also prepare the land office for the next wave of technology in the future, which is going to be alternative energy development on state lands. I believe that's extremely important. These oil and gas fields, they're going to be tapped out in 20 to 30 years, and if they're not, technology will replace them. And so we have to get the land office into the mode of having an alternative energy division and a natural sciences division to help us make decisions on the land and what's good for us all in the wildlife and the things that we love in the state. And that's why I ran again, and uh, it's been an exciting 10 months so far. Uh, the hard part is really ahead of us. That's the last three weeks. You know, our candidates, and Pat will probably agree with us, you always start feeling pretty stressed in the last three weeks. And we're just three weeks away uh, from uh, at least half the people voting. The other half will have voted before Election Day. Things have really changed that way, too. People early vote, they have some key vote. So over half the voters will have gone to the polls by the time November 7 turns around. So it's a real intense three weeks where we have to be everywhere at once. So I appreciate being able to come down here this evening and be with you. Be happy to answer your questions, and I uh, look forward to a great uh, evening of questions and answers. Thank you.